Hello everyone, Hello. and welcome back to New Improved Dog and Partridge Place with Overfine Craft House. If you haven't been before, you won't find him in any in house or house or any house at all except this one. It's world famous. <laughs> you won't find him in any race either. <laughs> Only to one to the beer tent. It's the world famous Alan Partridge. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? I, I can race, you know, bro. I can race. I'm, I'm spelt. <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't met him before, this is my amazing brewmaster brother Dave Park. He's good with them intros, isn't he? Oh, right, everyone. Dear Lord. Evening, bro. Evening, bro. How you doing? I'm not too bad. What are we here to do? Uh, beer reviews <laughs> of beer kits. That's what we do. I make beer kits. Uh, we review them and give you our honest, honest opinion. We do indeed. Um, once again, I am blind tasting all of these. Uh, I've not tasted any of the beers on the bar. Obviously, my brother has because he proved them. So you know. Well, I, I get a slight taste as I um, uh, siphon from the uh, fermented to the keg. To be fair, um, I've only just put these on myself. So there we go. So, there we Hopefully, go. brand new reviews with our honest opinion. So then, bro, where are we starting? Well, let's start at the far end of the bar. Ooh, I've got um, some water. Well. I've got some blurb. Uh, we're going to start, bro, with the lazy days, not the. Right. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. So this is from Dark Rock. This is from their new. Um... No, it's not. It's not from Dark Rock. It's uh, Dark Rock on top of it. It's bought it from Dark Rock, but it's Lazy Days made by Muntons. See, he's giving me the wrong info to start with, isn't he? Like, there you go, like. So it's Muntons, Taproom Lazy Days. That's it. Bought it from Dark Rock. <laughs> this is, oh, this is a. I'm going to start, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's not neat, is it? It's 5.5% at this point. So let's have a look then. Being such a versatile style of beer, the IPA has been pulled left right over the years, but this one is a perfect mix of bitterness, fruitiness, and hoppiness. Grapefruit and mango flavors combine perfect tropical storm. And up by 30 grams of subtle hops, giving a true sense of paradise. Now then, bro, so these are one tin kits. These are one tin kits. Um, so you can get you need to get some enhanced options. Yeah, this is why I've got Dark Rock, so I yeah. use the Dark Rock enhancer. Okay. So um, it's about five ninety nine. Yeah, so the kit answer. itself it says is eighteen ninety nine and then like about six quid for an answer. So you're still yeah. talking twenty five quid is yeah. Right then. Brews forty pints? Uh yeah, brews forty pints, twenty three litres or whatever you like to call it these days. Ooh, oh cheeky. I am getting some mango smell, but that sweet mango, you know the one well there's only one mango in there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm liking that. Yeah, but it does, uh, I know what you're saying, it does smell quite sweet, but it's nice and fruity though as well. Mm. Right, should we go in? Should we go in? Mm. Oh, hello. It's like this agreement with Devon Porridge. And to be fair, that, that's quite a nice refreshing beer, nice and cold. Yes. For me, it's a bit too perfumed and a bit too peachy. I get where you're coming from. You know me and my personal taste, I tend to lean towards liking that style of beer anyway. I know what you're saying, yeah, it's that floral. Yeah, almost. Like floral. yeah. you get almost like a bunch of flowers. And then it's a little yeah. bit that way inclined, yes. Yeah. Um and it's not but it's not punchy, is it either? It's not a punchy IPA, it's, it's not a slap your own face one, is it? No. I don't think there's a lot of bitterness there. To overpower that sweetness. Mm. It is quite a sweet bit. Mm. I quite like that. Mm. I'd go straight in with sort of like possibly a 9 out of 10. Even though it's not my favourite beer, I think they've done a good effort. Yes. Um, and come here, it's a 1 tin kit. It's a 1 tin kit. Yeah, I'll go for a 9 out of 10 as well. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Oh, not bad then. Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Cheers, mate. Mm. Are, are we moving straight onto another beer? No, why not, sir? <laughs> Before we do actually, Hello. I'd just like to mention all our beers are now freshly chilled. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to nip outside and show you how that's done. Oh, there's a bit of swift editing I can see coming here. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. So here we are at the back of the dog and partridge. And what looks like a normal shed is actually housing the new Kegerator from Kegland Series X Plus. Yes, this is a new Kegland uh, kegerator. This is chilling our beers at the moment. As you can see, we've got the gas hooked up. There's actually two holes in the back. So is that, uh, the gas goes to two secondaries, one at 30, one at 10. Each go in a separate uh, hole through the back, already made by uh, Kegland. And then into there to serve uh, four beers. 
And then they look inside this baby. We have six beers actually, but we're serving four. Uh, we've got a splitter on the gas lines so we can serve four uh, and chilling two ready to serve. Um, great really because this is mega i can keep the four beers i'm serving chilled and already have chilled beer ready for serve for the next one when one runs out as you can see on top where you'd normally have your towers we've got uh, our pipes coming out and they lead into the back of the dog and partridge where we're serving our beer nicely chilled that's where we are now so back to the studio yeah, so that's how it's done. Anyway, there you so go. That's how it's done. That's how we're now chilling beers. I know there's a lot of people out there make their own kegerators, uh, out of fridges, out of freezers, etc., etc. I didn't want to go down that route. I just wanted a turnkey kegerator, put my kegs in, keeping the beer cold. Well, we've had some problems in, in over the dramatic, deadly <laughs> heat wave. <It> we're horrible. <laughs> That, uh, with beers are actually re-fermenting in the case and getting knocked. Ah, yes, and, we, uh, we had a bit of experience, or you had a bit of experience with yeah. one of the one of the beers all, almost, or well, not doubling ABV, but it certainly shot up in ABV, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. next beer. Nice, golden, refreshing beer. Right, here we go then. So then again, this is another a one tin Munton's Tap Room series. Yeah. This is a higher ground coffee porter. Now this is a five centre. Let's have a look at this. Porters, oh, he's, he's got me some blurb here, look. Oh, yeah. Porters originated back in 1722, and their name came from London Street and the River Porters, who took a lightning to bold flavours. Higher ground takes his star to a new level. Yeah, new level. Uh, roasted coffee flavour, mild bitterness with a surprisingly sweet finish. Oh, he's not like that. Uh, and once again, I suppose you need an enhancer kit to go. You need an enhancer. I've got dark racks, dark... Uh, I think they do a, a start enhancer and yeah. a dark... In answer as well, so I think I've got their dark. It's answer. actually fractionally cheaper than that. So it's £16.99 plus you in answer. Yeah. Um, this is obviously their limited edition tap room series. So if you if you haven't tried any, uh, the the are here for apparently for a short while. Once they're gone, they're gone apparently. Ooh. So you you know get out there, get them tried. Now um, support support ones what they're doing because it's great to keep releasing these these yeah, new things. Yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. Like the new yeah. things coming through, and if you keep buying stuff, you never know. We, there might not be a recession like the media wants them to be. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Dra to my, yeah. dramatize the media. I don't know what you mean. Right then. <laughs> oh my life! Oh, oh, oh! Do you want a glass of coffee? I didn't <laughs> actually put any coffee in that, but it smells like coffee. It does smell like coffee a lot. When it says coffee porter, they they, they mean it. Coffee porter. Oh, this is gonna be a slap in the coffee face. It's actually unbelievable. I like coffee. Cheeky. That's surprisingly good, actually. It's not as sweet as what I thought it was going to be, like a milk stout. I tell you what, it's quite good. Yeah, well, you say that, I am getting that sweet tang oh, yeah. to it, yeah. Mm. Personally, over my part, I mean, the coffee's definitely there. That's it's sure. definitely, coffee definitely kills the, the sweetness out of the water. You see, my first taste, I get uh, the first over the top, I get sweetness. But then, like you say, the coffee comes in and goes, I'm not having any of that. <laughs> Yeah. The only criticism I've got with that is a mouthful feel. Mm, it's a bit. Mm, yeah. 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 But it is a one, but it is a one kit. kit. This is what you've got to remember. You're never going to get that full, no. full on punchy flavour, mouthful feel with a one tin kit. Unless, well, we've had some before, bored it yeah. but yeah. yeah. It's a good it's a good effort. It's, it's a, a nine out of ten again for me. Yeah, I'm going for ten out. <gasps> He's gone for ten out of ten. Well, one tin kit and that flavour mm. and that and that amount of Aroma. There was a lot of flavour. Without, without actually adding anything, without actually adding anything, is like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we get guys on on the Oberlin community and they're chucking coffee and stuff, or or they're getting tea bags and chucking stuff in, or no. peaches and stuff. This is having nothing no, in. To. No, this is to. having nothing in. It's just uh, as it came, and it's like it smells like coffee shop in here. It smells like brisket. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like brisket. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. It's a nine out of ten then. Um, so, I think we've got one more left, don't we? Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Well, my neighbour, he liked Big Newcastle Brown. So he's, I said, uh, well, you buy it, I'll make it. He did. Here it is. Now, this is dark roll. This is dark, <laughs> this this is, dark this roll. This is dark roll. And as you can see from the size of the big box, see, it's an all blanket. Yeah, and uh, your blurbs on the side. Your blurbs on the side. So it's Newcastle Brown. I presume we're all familiar with Newcastle Brown now. 
But uh, Newcastle Brown is the iconic beer of the ninety of ninety students. I didn't know that. Um, of what? Of the ninety students. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Really? Uh, it is full bodied smooth ale with hints of caramel, banana, and dry fruit. It has a smooth texture and a high carbonation, so it's best served from bottles. Yeah, well, I didn't. But we haven't. <laughs> uh, the moderate hot bitterness is paired with some nutty notes and slight hints of oak, with a slight burst of hoppiness finish. Yeah. There we go. I used to drink Newcastle Brown quite a lot because we used to, when we, you know, we were in our well, 20s. Well, there you go, student of the 90s. Well, you're right. When we were in our 20s and you went out on a night around the local city, it was probably the easiest thing to drink. <laughs> well, the nightclub we went to. Because it hadn't been watered down and, and, you know, what have you. The nightclub we went in was the only thing, safe thing to drink. Yes. <laughs> the beer came straight out of the bloody river. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> or the toilet one would do. Anyway, this is a, a bottle of Newcastle Brown. That's a bottle of Newcastle Brown. I'm just going to have a swig of that to, to see to remind myself of uh, what it tastes like. Right, cheers. Pretty much as I remember it. Mm, me too. Quite lovely, quite caramely. Yeah. Nutty, maybe a little bit as well. But yeah. Quite. They're not bad, actually. It's all right. It's not a beer I choose to drink these days. No. Least. Yeah, there's a lot of th better things on the market. You know, I think also, I think it's good, it, with me, Newcastle Brown sits a bit heavy. Yeah. yeah a, couple of, a couple of bottles of that, it's like, oh, it's so full. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's already gone straight in my stomach. Mm. 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 Heavyweight. It's a bit of an heavyweight. But we're not from Newcastle, we're not hard, you see, like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> right then. Yours. Cheers. Cheers. Mine or Dark Rocks, whichever you like to. Well, there's not a lot in the nose, is no, there? No, there is there? That's quite similar to that, I'd have to say. Yeah. It's not got a very strong nose, uh, no, Newcastle Brown, anyway. But... I'm not getting the roasty caramel I am like a, I am in the proper Newcastle. It's, 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 it's there, but... Yeah, not as much. Not right. much. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Well, if it didn't say Newcastle Brown on the box... Maybe you should have put it in bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that's not a bad brown beer, but as to a copy of Newcastle Brown... Yeah, it is, the, the, the right, it's lacking that carbonation, I suppose. You expect yeah. Newcastle Brown to have that carbonation, don't you? It's, it's not a bad, it's quite a sweet. If yours is a lot sweeter to me Yeah. than the bottle beer. It's got the same flavour as rocking in there. I don't think it has. Oh, there you go. I think you, th these basically are two different beers. I'm not getting any of the... I know it's a tribute to Newcastle Brown, it doesn't claim to be a claim, but at the end of the day... Ah, you know, you take a sip of one or the other and they are quite distinctly di different. It's a lot... I want to say sharp, because that that's, makes it sound wrong, but it is, it's, it's not as smooth as, as the original, is yeah, it? Yeah, but not only that, I think this is a lot more fruity. Yes, definitely. I think we get out of 10 then, Brian. Well, that's a poor effort for me. Mm. Um, I'm not keen. I'm not keen. I, basically, I'm not keen on Newcastle Brown. Now, don't get me wrong, there's no fault of Dark Rocks because I'm not keen on Newcastle Brown. Me stuff. Either. But if you're going to... If something's going to be a tribute, it needs to be a little bit closer, a bit closer than that. Maybe, uh, yeah. Probably if it was done in bottles, I don't know. If but again, what I say, we haven't bottled it. It just saves best bottled, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it just saves best bottled. So... Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to find out that too. I'll, I'll join you. I think about there somewhere, yeah. Mm. And it's perfectly drinkable. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's no. just not the style of beer that I or my brother particularly like. Oh, the neighbour likes it then. Uh, well, he bought it, didn't he? So, yeah. you know, I mean, it's not a kit you would have probably bought. No. So, so you know. Um, and there's uh, 30 odd pints of it to drink, so let's get cracking. Ah, so, I'll um, no doubt it'll be red later. <laughs> <laughs> Right then, bro, shall I inform the uh, viewers what's coming next? What's coming next time in the Dog and Partridge? We've got a Malt Miller multiplayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's that in? Uh, that's, uh, I think that's one of these collabs they've done. I think the multiplayer is the one they teamed up with all women brewers. Oh, right, okay. It's either that cool. or it's the other one, which is the obvious. Okay, the next one is Munton's Simply the Zest yeah. Taproom Series. Yeah. So it could be that one or that one. We'll find out before we make the next video. <laughs> and then Malt Miller. Oregon Trail is that? Yes, Oregon Trail. Now, now these two, these two ones from Mark Miller, mm -hmm. uh, they, they were released as special editions. Uh, I think both of them are. I can't remember which it is which one's which, but there's five women brewers got together okay. and made one of them. 
Cool. You oh. might think maybe it's the multiplayer then. That's why. I think. Yeah, I'm thinking that, but we'll we'll confirm that. We'll confirm that next time. Obviously, I haven't looked what exactly <laughs> what the uh, next time that is so. all about. So we've not really had ten out of ten. Apart from you, did give the ten out of ten yeah. to the coffee, didn't you? Yeah. So that's no beers on the twelve I'm or green beer kits. I'm afraid not. Not this week. No. There you go. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm going to be drinking. I think some of these lazy days. Quite a lot of that. Gug, you get it down your neck because I'm not keen on that either. Are you not? Right, there you go. Give it a nine, you know. <laughs> right then, if you're watching us on any other platform, head on over to that YouTube and uh, if you like us, hit that subscribe button. Yeah, uh, we do appreciate all the comments on YouTube. Please keep them coming. Please yeah. keep watching us. It's very much appreciated. Oh, very much appreciated. Like yeah. Yes. Uh, we have also been sent a beer from a guy uh, who's made a, a wheat beer out of those Moncton um, Craft Your Own series. Oh, my yeah. So we'll be trying that next time as well. It, it's, uh, it's fairly fresh, so I'll okay. that settle in. And, uh, cool. Yeah, we'll be up with that next well, time. Thank you very much. We'll try that in. Yeah. Lovely. All right, and it's, uh, until next time, it's a goodbye from him. And it's a goodbye from him. Huzzah! Huzzah! To the Queen! To the Queen! <laughs>